Network. My name is Dr. Carol Neal, and I would like to invite you guys to sit back, relax, and listen to none other than Dr. Lauren Aga as we learn about artificial intelligence. Um, she is a phenomenal lady that is interested into the research space of artificial intelligence. And this is something that we really need to think about as far as our future. She has been working for over 15 years as a nurse educator, a nurse leader. She has a strong academic background. She's a graduate of Aspen University where she focused on many different type of disease process dealing with minority and the Caribbean um, populations. Her doctoral work involved creating a community action plan to educate different communities in the minority space. She has a career span of 16 years um, working as an advocacy for a year, um, very rare diseases. Um, Dr. Aga is a veteran, believe it or not, um, she's been married for 13 years and she has two children and two dogs and her life work is all about serving the population, the minority population and educating us about best practices so that we can help to have a better life. So therefore, I want to turn it over to Dr. Lorda Ega. Thank you so much, Dr. Neal. Uh, thank you so much for that. Um, I um, will share, I um, am a wife of a wonderful Marine veteran um, and also nurse. So um, again, thank you so much uh, for uh, everyone joining uh, this presentation today. So again, thank you, Dr. Neal. My name is Dr. Lauren Edgar and the presentation I have to share is called The Future Is Now, AI's Role in Transforming Healthcare and Nursing. I'd like to just start with a few disclosures. Please note that this disclaimer, this is, is a disclaimer to clarify that my presentation today represents my views along with citations of other experts within the artificial intelligence and healthcare space and does not necessarily reflect the opinions of those within the National Institute of Health or the Food and Drug Administration. I'd like to also acknowledge that I was a part of the NIH's Aim Ahead project, which focuses on using artificial intelligence and machine learning tools to address issues related to health equity and disparities. So again, the future is now, AI's role in transforming healthcare and nursing. By the end of this presentation, my hope is for you to be able to understand just a few of the basics related to AI and its current applications in healthcare. I also hope for you to be able to recognize the importance of President Biden's recent executive order on AI and leverage what is shared through the AAAS decision tree that speaks to or provides a framework, I should say, for responsible AI application in healthcare settings. I'll then also hope for you to be able to identify, discuss, and even envision the impact that AI has on our arena, which is indeed nursing care, its practices, as well as its edu the education around nursing and training that we provide to those who look to practice in the future. I'll then also close with you being able to walk away with how the uh, how a artificial intelligence is envisioned for the future within the AI, excuse me, within the nursing arena as AI is more so taking over uh, certain aspects of the healthcare lens. So the agenda I have for you uh, over the next 45 minutes or so includes an overview and understanding of AI and healthcare, along with addressing a few of President Biden's executive order on AI. We'll then dive into the decision tree for responsible AI application in healthcare, and I'll close with a few mentions related to AI's impact on nursing care and education. First off, the overview. I'd like to first share with you um, perhaps what could be considered a very brief answer to answering the question that is, what is artificial intelligence? I'd like to 
first mention that in the realm of artificial intelligence, also known as AI, it's important to know that AI uses algorithms. And algorithms is a commonly used term that's alternatively said as code. And an algorithm is in, art, in artificial intelligence refers to a structured set of instructions or rules designed specifically to accomplish a defined task or resolve a certain problem. These algorithms are pivotal in AI as they constitute the core of various machine learning models, aid in making decisions and play a crucial role in analyzing and interpreting data, very similar to what we already do in nursing. The use of these algorithms underscores the systematic and logical approaches that AI employs to mimic or even enhance human intelligence and decision-making processes. I'd like to also mention that there are a few popular AI tools that are being used today. Just a few mentions, as you see on this slide, Netflix is one of them. It's important to know that Netflix Netflix's algorithms indeed have a system where it uses massive data analytics and advanced machine learning techniques that take into account our behavior that includes our viewing history, uh, any uh, um, TV or movie searches, or even how we rate titles. And it examines the show and movie metadata, such as like what genres or cast or even release dates that help to make its decision on what it could indeed recommend for us to uh, watch in future dates or keep watching, if you will. Amazon is very similar where it looks to recommend, use a recommendation system that enhances the shopping experience by offering relevant products. Especially as we uh, come closer to the holiday season, these algorithms are going to look to process our data, like for instance, prior transactions based on what we purchased last year, looking at what we're holding in our shopping cart, or even what we have rated in terms of products or reviewed, and what other customers even perhaps have seen or bought. And what Amazon does is uses the algorithms to analyze the product page time to estimate what perhaps we may like, and that can help to produce sales. Lastly, I'll mention Facebook. Facebook creates marketing strategies. It optimizes advertiser marketing with complex algorithms. And the software analyzes what we like or what we share or even the comments we make and even information from our own profile to determine user interests and habits. This data helps advertisers kind of perhaps tailor advertising to the right audience. Facebook's algorithms employ user engagement to improve targeting and ad relevancy to optimize user involvement and advertiser return on investment. So really what we're looking at are leveraging the strengths of these algorithms to again, foster production of marketing strategies to include uh, creating highly engaging content that aligns with our preferences. I also now like to share that when we think about these algorithms, I'd like to also mention just a few ways that within the umbrella of artificial intelligence, it's important to think about these applications as leveraging what is included in the artificial intelligence subdomain. The subdomain of AI involves, for instance, with Facebook and Amazon, it generates recommendations and developed marketing strategies that, again, pull this data and this, in, in, in the way that this is done is by way of what we call machine learning. And this machine learning includes how these recommender systems are created, as well as a component of predictive analytics. You'll hear me say predictive analytics later on in this presentation. Two features that I haven't mentioned as of yet are ChatGPT and BARD. ChatGPT, also known as Chat Generated Pre-Trained Transformer, was made public in late 2019 and falls under the subdomain of artificial intelligence known as natural intelligence, or excuse me, natural language processing also known as NLP. Now, NLP is concerned with perhaps maybe some of the interactions between computers and humans. And it particularly learns how to program computers to process and analyze large amounts of natural language data, particularly just how we speak to computers. So ChatGPT is a computer program that understands and creates text like a human would. It is part of a field of 
artificial intelligence that is known for as NLP, again, which deals with making computers understand what we're saying to it and use human language to respond back to us. So it, it's one way to think about ChatGBT is to think about it as a robot that can chat with you, answer your questions, or even write stories or explain things based on what you ask. In the AI world, we call it prompt engineering. So again, it's like teaching a computer to have a conversation. Similarly, Google created BARD in early 2023 to combat the likes of ChatGBT. So here is a summary of ultimately what particular pieces each of these applications use to develop anywhere from marketing strategies to something like ChatGPT, where ChatGPT can help to produce family fun activities for a rainy day or even content strategy for a new one. The use of artificial intelligence in healthcare has progressed dramatically over the last 20 years. AI, or I should say 20 to 50 years. AI made its first step into the medical profession in, with early clinical decision support systems back in the 1960s. These systems were created to aid doctors in diagnosing and treating patients. As we approached the 70s and the 80s, this is where we saw the development of more powerful systems capable of handling more complex medical data and offering more nuanced support to healthcare workers as technology involved. The spike in AI development that has occurred since the turn of the century can be linked to the large advances in computer power, ambiguous access of vast amounts of medical data, and major advances in machine learning methods. These advancements have resulted in more precise and individualized healthcare solutions, which have transformed patient care and medical research. Again, artificial intelligence has somewhat become a cornerstone in modern healthcare, offering a multitude of advancements across various applications, as you can see here. Anywhere ranging from diagnostics and imaging, AI algorithms excel in identifying even the, more, the most subtle of patterns in medical images that often are undetectable to the human eye, which leads to earlier and more accurate diagnoses. Predictive analytics, as I mentioned before, harness the power of big data to foresee perhaps patient outcomes or even gauge readmission risks and alert to possible health complications. Personalized medicine has been revolutionized by AI, which can customize treatment plans by analyzing each patient's unique health data, ensuring tailored and effective care. I am remiss if I do not mention the field of surgery and how AI has affected this arena. The field of surgery has been transformed by AI-driven robots that you may see in your hospitals, for example, the Da Vinci that enhance the precision and control surgeons have during operations. There's also virtual health assistants that are powered by AI, and these provide invaluable support and information to both patients and healthcare professionals, streamlining communication and healthcare processes. Lastly, the management of the electronic health record has vastly improved by AI's tools capable of organizing and analyzing these large data sets improving accessibility and leading to better overall patient management. I'd like to share that by 2022, the FDA had already authorized 91 AI powered devices. One of them being the Echo Go heart failure tool, which detects heart failure from a single echocardiogram. I first want to just make a few honorable mentions about what myths and truths there are out there about AI. A few truths include AI will be able to, excuse me, a few myths. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, forgive me, you guys. The, um, the headers for these sections should be um, um, switched over. A few myths include AI, think, the thought that AI will replace humans. It's important to understand that AI will indeed augment what we do at the bedside. 
While AI possesses unparalleled data processing capabilities, it still lacks the emotional intelligence needed in healthcare settings. It doesn't have necessarily the empathy, compassion, and human touch that can indeed not, cannot be replicated by machines. So instead, the ideal scenario is to have our skilled physicians collaborate with AI, leveraging its strengths to augment patient care. There's also a concern related to the impact on healthcare employment. A common fear is the potential of AI leading to job losses in the health sector. It's important to note that while AI might, again, automate certain tasks like administrative work, it also paves the way for newer roles in AI development, data analysis, and patient care coordination, which is what we nurses are indeed very involved in. The vision isn't to replace, again, but to augment, allowing healthcare professionals to dedicate more time to patients and less time on administrative tasks. Now, there is a thought that perhaps AI will inflate healthcare costs. However, this indeed could not be further from the truth. In fact, AI offers pathways to cost savings by increasing efficiency and eliminating unnecessary procedures. A prime example is where AI's predictive analytics model can identify patients at high risk, perhaps for falls, allowing for early intervention to be put into place. Again, this model that by other vigorous clinical trials has showcased the potential of AI in enhancing patient care while curbing expenses. Now there is indeed what I like to highlight as a major concern related to data security. Now it's important to know that data security is paramount and concerns about AI comprising this security, comprising this level of security that is needed is indeed valid. However, AI can be an asset here too. There's also the concern about AI being impartial or infallible. It's important to know that while we praise AI for what it can do, it is crucial, and I call upon us as an organization, to remember that it isn't flawless or inherently impartial. AI's decision-making is as good as the data it's trained on, and what's behind the data are humans, and humans can indeed be biased. Biased data leads to biased AI. Hence, it is on us to use quality, unbiased data or we can call upon those who are behind the algorithms to leverage opportunities to ensure quality and indeed allow for continual validation and refinement of their algorithms for thus producing accuracy and fairness. So in summary, I'd like to share that while AI brings transformative potential to healthcare, it is not without its challenges. But this slide is meant to call out particularly the myths and truths about AI as it exists today. So I'd like to then carry you into AI in healthcare and what it looks like in the clinical arena. I mentioned what the FDA had already approved as of 2022. I'd like to also share that as of January, 2023, there were more than 520 market cleared artificial intelligence medical algorithms available in the U.S. that were approved by the FDA. These predominantly are found within the medical imaging space, radiology, but also can be found in robotics and diagnostic aids. To the right of this slide lists specialties of where you can find these market cleared artificial intelligence algorithms being utilized to include cardiology, hematology, neurology, gastroenterology, and urology, along with general hospital and orthopedic arenas. I'd also like to mention a few areas in the non-clinical space. It's important to know that non-clinical healthcare sectors are being transformed by artificial intelligence, which is improving operational efficiencies and patient engagement without the requirement of FDA approval. Now, beyond the clinical treatment, artificial intelligence is having substantial impact on many aspects. And again, AI, this is discovering trends and risk factors in population data to improve chronic disease management and inform preventative care measures. 
AI-powered health tracking applications are available that monitor vital signs and other healthcare indicators, proactively alerting users to potential healthcare risks. AI also plays an important role in fostering health equity by evaluating patient data to ensure equitable healthcare delivery across different demographics. And AI algorithms in terms of the revenue cycle management streamline includes billing and claims, payments, and this allows for the enhancement of financial efficiency for providers. AI capacity to AI's capacity to predict patient flow and optimize resource distribution, such as projecting bed availability, improves operational efficiencies in hospitals. There's also AI's continuous patient data analysis that, again, as I mentioned with predictive analytics, helps to improve early warning systems for illness, such as what we see already related to sepsis in the acute care settings. Furthermore, AI evaluates massive amounts of healthcare data, providing useful insights into performance indicators. AI improves patient wellness and prevention by customizing health recommendations and encourages adherence to encouraging adherence to health programs and screenings, demonstrating AI's very varied applicability in the healthcare system improvement. What I'd like to share on the right side of this slide are emerging outcomes from what we are already seeing this year. That includes Indiana hospitals reducing nuance alerts by 77% with medication decision support software. There's also medication reconciliation data cons consolidation being affected based on what is pulled from the EHR. As I mentioned, ChatGPT has found its, its way into healthcare and ChatGPT, again, a natural language processor, can help doctors with who are experiencing difficulties with diagnosing their patients. You are also seeing organizations, companies like Epic and Microsoft join forces to tackle some of healthcare's biggest AI challenges. So I'd like to share overall with the AI healthcare trajectory. It's important to know that AI in healthcare market in the healthcare market is experiencing significant growth, particularly in North American region where demand is surging. Hospitals and healthcare providers are capturing the majority of this market share, incorporating AI across a spectrum of applications, as I mentioned, aimed at enhancing patient care services, including inpatient care, emergency services, surgery, geriatric care, and mental health. A notable rise in the use of predictive analytics, as I mentioned before, demonstrates the sector's increasing reliance on AI to forecast healthcare outcomes, optimize patient care, and streamline service delivery. This trend underscores a broader move towards a more data-driven, efficient, and patient-centric healthcare model powered by the advanced capabilities of AI. It's important to know that AI is pivotal in the health in healthcare as one of as healthcare indeed is one of the top five big data industries driving AI innovation innovations to meet the increasing demand for improved healthcare services. By analyzing the vast data sets, it's AI that uncovers the new correlations and insights propelling advancements in treatment and diagnostics. And it can help to tackle challenges in chron like chronic disease management, support for aging population, and delivering care in under-resourced settings. AI and AI's impact on healthcare is indeed profound with the potential of enhancing outcomes, cutting costs, and improving experiences of both the patient and providers, positioning it as crit a critical component in the future of healthcare's delivery and innovation. I hope my last few mentions help to address why AI is important in healthcare. Despite recent references of the benefits of AI's use in healthcare, such innovation does not occur without its risks and hurdles. Dr. Obermeyer and colleagues back in 2019 conducted a study that is noteworthy, a noteworthy example that shows the importance of ethical rules and regulatory frameworks in AI applications. 
regular, excuse me, particularly in the domains of healthcare. This study published in the Journal of Science as it relates to artificial intelligence system utilizes in healthcare settings was biased, it called out its bias against black individuals. AI has supposed, excuse me, the study supposed that identifying patients that require additional medical attention is needed, but due to the biased training data, it preferred white patients above black patients. And even when black patients were notably and apparently sicker. This study indeed serves as a case study in the potential of the perils of unregulated and unethical AI use, particularly in sensitive domains such as the one we are in, that is, that is healthcare where decisions can have far reaching consequences on people's lives. It emphasizes the significance of ensuring that AI systems are created and deployed in a fair, transparent and non-discriminatory manner. I'd like to now then guide you towards doc, no, excuse me, uh, President Biden's executive order on AI that was just released within the last 60 days. And this is called Advancing Equity and Civil Rights and Support for Consumers, Patients, and Students. This is a subsection of the executive order, and this subsection addresses concerns explicitly, the concerns that I mentioned explicitly. This executive order, again, underscores the need of developing and deploying AI in an equitable and civil rights compliant manner. It seeks to ensure that AI systems do not reinforce existing prejudices or imbalances, but rather promotes fairness and inclusivity. I'd like to just share that again, this slide is meant to highlight the essential aspect of President Biden's most recent order. And indeed, continue our efforts to discover a fundamental risk as we enter the transformative domain of our artificial intelligence. And again, the potential for artificial intelligence to unintentionally entrench discrimination and even hate. This is especially relevant in sectors that are not just situated in healthcare, but also legal and housing sectors where prejudice can have catastrophic, catastrophic consequences. So indeed, this the Biden administration has taken a proactive step and this publication along with other publications aim to play as a strategy along with mandate towards federal agencies to serve as a cry to combat the insidious spread of algorithm, algorithmic discrimination, guaranteeing hopefully that our authorities are ready to protect people's rights and safety in the face of rapidly evolving technologies. I'd like to also share that the decision tree for responsible application of artificial intelligence was also produced by the American Association of Advancement of Science. And this, again, was a tool to help decision-making or a, a decision-making in AI development and deployment. Again, this paradigm is, to, is intended to help stakeholders assess the ethical legal and societal implications of AI applications. And it underlines the significance of thoroughly examining AI systems for potential biases, ethical difficulties, and effects on various communities, hence supporting responsible and equitable AI use. So again, this project, which was inspired in part by studies like Dr. Obermar's study in 2019, as an important step towards assuring AI's responsible and useful usage, particularly in key industries like healthcare. I'd like to now take it to the focus on AI's influence and impact on nursing care practices. I'd like to first share that based on a scoping review conducted by Dr. Buchanan et al, AI indeed is set to transform all domains of nursing practice. This includes administration, clinical care, education, policy, and research. This scoping review aims to indeed summarize how AI health technologies, also known as AIHTs, will influence nurse education in the next decade and beyond. What you see here 
are is a summary of the potential benefits along with the potential challenges that exist as we look to adopt artificial intelligence in both the pre-licensure programs aimed to train the future nursing workforce, as well as those who will be affected in practice. It is important to know that, again, this, uh, this slide summarizes is simply the outline or provides an outline that a artificial intelligence indeed will have an impact on. And again, this is including the necessity for proactive changes in nursing curricula and teaching practices to prepare nurses for the future. I think it's important to mention how AI is already being utilized today. And the uh, this slide is meant to call out some of the organizations that are already looking, are already leveraging real world applications currently. And what I'd like to share with you are three organizations where nurses are involved with leveraging AI supported tools at the bedside. Nurses are increasingly leveraging smart algorithms and AI technologies to enhance patient care. Yale New Haven Health utilizes the Rothman Index generated from routine nursing documentation to alert their nursing SWAT teams who are equipped with skills in critical care and trauma about patient deterioration. This system enables timely interventions and collaboration with medical staff. Similarly, AI tools are being used to predict hospital readmissions. For instance, NYU's Langen Health's AI program assesses the risk of readmission by analyzing physician notes, while a study in Maryland hospitals also use an AI tool that leverages over 300 variables, including demographic and socioeconomic data, socioeconomic data to predict readmission risks. In addition to the predictive analytic mentions that, uh, or analytic examples that I mentioned before, robotics is transforming nursing with developments in ambulatory support, vital sign measurement, and medication administration. This can be found within University of Cincinnati's program on how robots aid nursing allow nurses, allowing them time for more patient interaction. In addition, and again, in accordance with Buchanan, Dr. Buchanan et al's scoping review, I think it's also important to mention how AI is transforming nurse education and training. As AI has a substantial impact or will have a substantial impact if it doesn't have it already on how nurses are trained for the modern healthcare setting. What we're looking to see are adaptive learning systems powered by AI that again, deliver individualized learning experiences that improve comprehension and retention by responding to individuals' learning styles. There's also immersive simulations and virtual patients that provide students with realistic interactive environments in which to practice their abilities while boosting clinical judgment and decision-making. It's important to know that this technology is critical in educating nurses data-driven decision-making, again, which is always critical in the face of today's healthcare, especially as it relates to precision medicine and precision care that involves tailoring treatments to particular patient needs. Furthermore, it's important to know that AI promotes technological fluency, and this helps to prepare nurses to use AI tools effectively in the healthcare setting. There's also AI's component in delivery of online and distant learning education. Again, AI's usage in promoting continual learning for our seasoned practitioners and adaptability through personalized recommendations and training modules are what we can look to anticipate. Overall, the import incorporation of AI into nursing education ensures that nurses will indeed have the essential skills to provide high quality patient-centered care in a fast-changing healthcare context. I'd like to share with this slide, again, how NBNA's mission is to serve as the voice for Black nurses and diverse populations to ensure equal access to professional development, promoting educational opportunities, and improving health. 
So in the context of this presentation, I'd like for us as an organization to consider, continue considering the following bullet points related to digital literacy among black nurses related to AI, considerations related to the enhancement of education related to ethical considerations, potential biases in AI systems, and how to advocate for equitable AI use. And lastly, continue what we are already considering in terms of its emphasis, AI's emphasis on the importance of ethics and healthcare technology through research, leadership, and policy. This presentation began with an examination of the main overview and understanding uh, and broad, broad, and I'll say broad loosely, uh, broad fundamentals of artificial intelligence and its current implementations in healthcare laying out the groundwork for how we can look to understand what artificial intelligence looks like in our workspaces. The executive order on AI issued by President Biden garnered recognition for its significance owing to its potential ramifications within the healthcare industry. The discussion was a uh, discussion was also had regarding subsequent transition in to the influence of AI on nursing practices, providing an in-depth analysis of ways in which these practices have developed since integration of AI. Additionally, we also discussed the impact of artificial intelligence on the field of nursing education and training and showcasing, showcased the transformations that have indeed and have the potential of occurring as artificial intelligence enhances. I also mentioned AAAS's decision tree that was integrated into the presentation to illustrate, or in my presentation to illustrate the implementation of responsible artificial intelligence in healthcare environments. With this in mind, I hope that those who have participated on this call, as well as those who listen to the recording later, will gain a better understanding of the application of artificial intelligence in healthcare its potential related to health equity, and its profound impact on nurse education and care in the future. I sincerely hope that as members of, as we, that we as members of the National Black Nurse Association move forward with the courage to contribute to this paradigm shift within the healthcare sector, with strong willingness to continue or even initiate discussions about artificial intelligence within our professional workspaces and networks as well as perhaps advocate for initiatives aimed at improving the accessibility and quality of healthcare for communities of color through the use of AI supported tools. Again, esteemed colleagues, thank you so much uh, for giving me your time today. I indeed know that it is some of your lunch hour. So uh, I'd like to convey my sincere thanks to my colleagues and members of leadership at the NIH's Aim Ahead Program and National Alliance Against Disparities in Patient Health. I'd also like to express my heartfelt gratitude to the distinguished executive board and hardworking members of the Southern Nevada Black Nurse Association, of which I am a member and past president of. A special thanks is also, I would like to also extend a special thanks to the members and chair of the National Black Nurse Association's Population Health Committee. Thank you again, Dr. Neal, for your support. And I'd also like to express my gratitude and appreciation to the present and incoming president of the National Black Nurse Association. And lastly, the valued membership of the National Black Nurse Association. Thank you all for those who are on the call today as we work together to improve health and nursing care. Thank you so much, Dr. Egger. It was very informative. Everyone I'm sure on the call um, enjoyed your presentation. Um, my first question to you, I want to open it up so everybody start thinking of any questions um, that you might have. But my first question would be, talk to us about, um, I'm really concerned about the biases. Yes. I'm really um, concerned about the bias because as you said, we could have a robot. Yes. And if the person, a human is behind the AI. Yeah. So if that human is biased, then they are coming up with the algorithm yeah. and it could be negative towards minorities. How could we fix that or what could we do as the um, Population Health Committee or what could we do with MBNA to try to um, curt change some of that? 
Possibly. Thank you, Dr. Neal. Great question. A few uh, things come to mind. I'll just name three um, uh, for the, uh, in the spirit of time. Uh, first and foremost, I think it's important for us as a membership to educate ourselves on what language, um, I should say, uh, needs to be uh, learned and had in order to have the right conversations. What we are facing right now are healthcare providers talking with experts in computer science. Because again, what informs these algorithms that can indeed be biased is data. Data. So I'll give you an example. Some of that data, or I should say a lot of that data, um, currently, um, it includes content that I'd like to think of as content that is more, um, not necessarily scientifically based, but more um, socially constructed. And what I'm speaking of is when we fill out an application and we're asked to either check black, white, Hispanic, non-Hispanic, those options when we complete uh, any type of application within the healthcare system really is, there's no scientific backing to this information. So when we think about bias, we think about how what opportunities we can look to um, uh, uh, foster conversations around to ensure that bias is limited. And I would even say thinking about how we fill out applications as it relates to checking black, white, non-Hispanic, Hispanic, and so forth, or Asian descent, really just using that as a conversation piece to address what issues that exist that can foster conscious or even unconscious bias. I understand. It kind of makes me think of clinical trials, yes. uh, because when you're doing clinical trials, if you don't have enough minorities in the clinical trial to begin with, how are they going to get the right kind of data to yes. know that we're getting the right kind of medicines or getting the right services that we need? Um, how could we um, throw artificial intelligence in that? Yes, um, I love that question because I actually was just at John Hopkins this morning um, uh, and we were talking about this exact thing. Um, I will say that clinical trials don't just include drugs, new drugs that are being produced into the healthcare market or in the pharmaceutical market. Clinical trials also includes the development of how these AI supported medical devices are being produced. And it still has to go through that there's still a process that the FDA has that uh, these companies are required to follow. So what we can also think about is when in the context of a clinical trial where individuals of African descent or minority individuals encounter phases within this trial. This is where we as nurses can indeed have an impact and hopefully even hold these companies, the developmental companies um, accountable for ensuring that as we are looking to ensure that we have a diverse participation pool, we want to make sure that what goes into the final product is indeed informed by a diverse population. So it could be as easy as making sure that your application does, um, doesn't just um, include what is socially constructed in terms of race and ethnicity, but ask, hold them accountable to what other aspects of, of um, an individual can be considered along with what goes into the algorithm that's meant to inform these devices. Very good, very good. So at this point, I want to open up the lines. Um, I'm going to the chat box. Do we have anyone on the call that would like to say anything, a question while I'm looking at the chat box? Do you have a question for Dr. Lauren? Anyone on the call while I'm looking at the chat box? Please speak now. Yes. Hi, it's Dr. Marsha Lowe, your second vice president. And thank you so much for that great presentation. Um, hey, I was wondering... Do you think that more use of AI in healthcare would decrease human contact? Are you aware of any information regarding this topic? Uh, thank you for that. Um, I indeed think that, and again, this is just what, uh, based on my, uh, this is my opinion alone, but because there's a lot of investment, uh, there will be a lot of investment towards predictive analytics and predictive analytics in healthcare is uh, something like as if we're assessing fall risk uh, for our patients at the bedside. And what, what that could look like when we leverage predictive analytics is instead of us conducting a fall risk assessment every shift, which is the standard, 
we now have these eyes in the sky where the predictive analytics tool will tell us this is the level of risk that the patient has in terms of falling. And what we're looking to use, how we're looking to use that particular feature is to augment what interventions we uh, put in place for our patients. So what that says to me is there's less time filling out the scale or less time in the computer and allowing the computer to make the decision for us that would inform what we do for our patients. So indeed, I think it'll allow for, and that's just an example of how it could potentially give us uh, more time with the patient. Very good. It looks like we have a, thank you, Dr. Lowe. Thank you so much for that question. Um, it looks like we have a question from Ms. Mamie Williams. Hello, yes, this is Dr. Mamie Williams and I represent the National Chapter of the National Black Nurses Association. Thank you for a wonderful presentation on AI. Um, it was so much information. What I wanted to know is, do you have a recommendation for some organizations that nurses should start joining, um, getting on committees so that the nursing perspective is heard early on during the development of some of these programs um, that will be out in healthcare? And if you could give us a list of you know, where should we be putting our efforts to help and making sure the minority perspective is heard? Yes, absolutely. Thank you, Dr. Williams, for your question. Um, the organization that I mentioned before, NIH's Aim Ahead program, I highly encourage everyone to at least look to become a member of the uh, community uh, that is uh, the Aim Ahead community. What Aim Ahead is looking to do is diversify uh, the uh, pool uh, of enthusiasts around artificial intelligence. And that's to diversify among um, members of the healthcare team, uh, diversify uh, in terms of gender and so forth. So um, I first and foremost encourage everyone to join the Aim Ahead community. Yes, yes, Dr. Lowe, I will put um, the link in the chat, um, but I encourage everyone to look to be a part of the Aim Ahead community. Um, I know that um, the last thing you want to do is uh, go for anything that will ask more of your time, but I think it's worth going and being a part of the community just to see what's, what conversations are being had. There are chats, uh, conversations already being held in the, um, within the in, uh, intranet that we have, um, so I encourage everyone to join. It's free to join, by the way, free to join the community. Very good. Miss Connie, it looks like you have a question. How can more minority nurse leaders and educators become more involved in developing the narrative for AI concerning care for minority patients? Yes, absolutely. Um, I think from my experience, I imagine this looking different depending on your professional networks and your position within the nursing um, industry. I know there are uh, administrators out there, there are uh, deans, uh, what we all do, uh, particularly, or what our ministry, uh, what our call to the nursing ministry, uh, what that looks like, I think calls for different things. So what you can look to do within, from your seat, is indeed find out where AI applications are being used and have conversations with the company that's producing those devices. Um, I am a currently a postdoc fellow with NIH and FDA, and my hope is to have more conversation um, about how we nurses, with the FDA, I should say, um, is to have more conversation about how we nurses can upskill ourselves uh, about what regulatory requirements FDA is looking to put in place or has put in place. So um, I will say from the seat that you're in, don't feel like you have to... Um, uh, take on new competency, start with where you are. Um, if you are a nurse faculty member like myself, uh, start with asking what research do I have within my institution or within my academic institution that will either upskill me or uh, give me information that will allow me to upskill my students. Um, so start with where you're at. Again, um, right, this we're still so early in the conversation and I don't think, I'm, I'm not getting the impression that nurses or being asked to the table yet um, in terms of the computer science arena um, within as it relates to computer science, but we need to get ready for it. So look to see what resources you have from the seat that you're in and um, follow aim ahead, follow aim ahead because that'll bring you a step closer and perhaps ask some different questions of your network. I have a question. Talk to us about AI as it relates to religion. With everything that's going on now, I can actually see where it may be used in a positive or negative way. Is that being utilized at all? 
Oh, yes, absolutely. So, um, so religion, just like race, uh, you know, can be used as a weapon when it comes to in the context of artificial intelligence. And as you mentioned, it can be used as uh, uh, as a way to address uh, health or address disparities. Um, it it all falls back to what all goes into the algorithm. To me, that is probably the lowest hanging fruit. Making sure that the algorithm isn't doesn't consist of data that can be that can exploit, but also doesn't consist of it doesn't employ an algorithm that can look to learn to exploit. So it's starting it's it's taking the original data set, ensuring that it doesn't have any information that would. Um, presents a particular religion in a negative light and ensuring that if it's in a machine learning system, ensuring that the machine doesn't learn that a particular re religion is a bad one or, um, or, or a, a negative, I should say, a negative. They're perceived as negative, I should say, because what we have to understand is that we're not just training one algorithm. We are in the position where the machine can start to learn just like a child, just like a child. A child can indeed start to learn based on its experiences. And what we don't want is for the computer to, based on its experience, um, develop a, a learned behavior that supports any religion in a negative light. Um, I also say this with uh, concern towards data in itself. It's all about the data. It's all about how the computer is trained and how it learns from the data. Um, this is, I also will, will uh, turn it over to also say what we also need to consider how our data is being used. So when we are filling out an application that asks our religion, if there is an AI supported tool on the other side of this application, something that we want to be aware of as well, is this putting me at risk based on what information I'm providing from based on my uh, preference for religion that is that has any risk to exploit me or my loved ones in any way or those within my religious community. So overall, how do you see the future of AI? Because it sounds like it's very prevalent in nursing. It could yeah. be prevalent in religion. What about a war? It could be prevalent in that. How do you see, do you see it taking over everything in a sense? I don't see it taking over. Again, it's at least in the healthcare sector, it's indeed going to augment. Um, are there certain uh, are there certain aspects of our job that AI can take care of? Absolutely. And the way I see it is it's more of the tasks that don't allow us necessarily to practice at our full scope. So when I say taking over, when, when, when we say taking over, we can indeed look forward to a new way of delivering care. We can look forward to um, anticipating new care delivery models within nursing. Um, but I don't think that it will ever, in terms of, in, in, in the context of taking over, I don't believe it'll ever take over our role as a nurse or the role of the healthcare team, because what we do will always require a human element. Thank you. So one last question, because it is five minutes to one. Is there anybody on the call that has a burning last question before we close it out? One person. Hey, Dr. Lowe again. Yes, uh, I Dr. Was Lowe. Wondering, <laughs> I was wondering if Dr. Edgar would be willing to submit an abstract to the conference, because I think this is a great session, a great topic, and I think it will be well attended. So just keep that in mind. Yes, and Dr. I have Lowe. information if you need it. Just email me. Okay. Yes, Dr. Lowe. Thank you so much. I'd be happy to. Thank you. Well, welcome again to Wisdom Wednesdays. We have been, this is our last um, webinar for um, 2023. Um, we have been hosting Wisdom Wednesdays, Wednesdays and webinars ever since 2020. That is when I first became the chair of the Population Health Committee. And we have done a lot of work. And um, I just love it to see each of you guys participating and being a part 
on your busy day just to come to one of our um, webinars. So thank you so much. Thank you again, Dr. Ager, for sharing such a great topic. And thank you for being a member of the Population Health Committee so that we could do best practices and share the information with the membership. So thank you very much, everybody. Have a great rest of your day. Goodbye. Bye-bye, everybody.